car year. Seventh time DUI, last time driving along. <laughs> <laughs> and it was George Jones. Got a lot of people drive a lawnmower when he's drunk. Uh, you don't have to have a license to drive a lawnmower, do you? They got their opinion interest again by they know about you too. We'll be on in a minute. We're there. Yeah, I was telling them. Uh, we're, we're being. Yeah, we're there. No, we're, we're, we're not two. We're there. not. <laughs> we're both places, but we uh, ain't on the Channel 12 yet. <laughs> All right. Well, as long as we're on the air, I mean, both sides are good. You don't have to uh, worry about which side they're getting. And, uh, no, we're gonna be told when we're on. Uh, you no, know, we can see. We're on TV. We, yeah, we will be when we get on TV. Right now, we've got a commercial on TV. Yeah, well, that's what I know. But how do we know? Well, well whenever we come back up there, it's us. Oh, I'm the Purdy, and then there's you. Oh, well, I recognize us uh, now. Well, you're the one with the hat on. Hey folks, welcome to the Wednesday night edition of UGG TV, and as you can see, we are live at 1450 WLAF. We're not going to give you the street address, uh, you just have to use your GPS if you want to find us, but we want to welcome you here tonight. Yeah, we do. Just don't tell them about where we're at. Are you voted yet, Bob? No, no, you know, I meant to vote early and vote often, but I, I miss early voting, so I guess uh, tomorrow is voting day, right? Yeah. And You got part, your photo ID? Uh, I thought that was illegal. Not here. No. I think they all know me. I don't think... That I'm, don't make no difference. <laughs> you got to prove you're you. We don't want somebody impersonating you. Right. Well, you know, Putting in a good vote. I thought it was a little foolish to argue whether or not you should have a photo ID. I went over to uh, uh, Phillips Scrap Company a couple of years ago, and I had been going for four or five years. Yeah. And I got over there, and I did not have my driver's license with me. And they would not waive the requirement that I have a driver's license with me, a photo ID, 
even though they had me on record, on computer, uh, on everything, I had to have that driver's license with me. So I had to call back to my father and have somebody bring the driver's license over to me before I could get my uh, uh well, they ought to have a picture. They ought to have a picture of it on file somewhere. Why? They ought to have a picture of it on file. They somewhere. had a picture of every. I mean, yeah, they had many times my thumbprint, everything on it, you know. But you know, nowadays, uh, it doesn't make any difference. Common sense does not exist anymore. I have come to that conclusion that it's not at all common. Well, like I said, it just it, it just does not exist anymore. You realize that they, since Obama has been in office, there are 17 million more people receiving food stamps than there were when he took office. Yeah, I realize that. It went from 30 to 47, didn't it? Yeah, from 30, 30 million to 47 million people. All and I sudden, still ain't got mine started. I, I, I'm, I'm damned and sent me my food stamp card either, and I'm getting a little bit disturbed. I heard them say that, I don't know about here, but I assume it's the same way. You could buy whiskey with the EBT card. What? Well, I don't want no whiskey, but I'd like to have one of the EBT cards. <laughs> I mean, you both. But I'm, I'm concerned they've not sent me my free telephone. I don't have my food stamp card. Uh, you know, I'm just feel like I have fallen through the cracks. Well, you look like you fell through the cracks. You know, old house I was raised, uh, born in, you could feed the chickens on the house through the cracks, through the cracks in the floor. Well, you didn't waste food on chickens, did you? Oh, we always had fun food. I was talking to somebody uh, yesterday. Uh, I can't take his last name, but uh, he's a retired auto worker. Uh, he's probably 82, 83 years old. Uh, and he said he was so thankful he was raised on a farm that he had never been hungry in his life. Mm -hmm. I said, well, I'm going to have to confess also. I, in 77 years, I have never missed a meal. I, 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 you know, if I missed a meal, it's because I just didn't want to eat. You know, it wasn't because I didn't have anything to eat. I have never, in 77 years, except for a six-month period of time, ever lived in a house that either my parents did not own, that my parents owned, or I owned. What about you going to school? Uh, what about you going to college? Well, that's my home was still with my mom and dad. Okay, I was still counting the residents. Okay, uh, counting the residents there. I understand that. And, and, uh, when I graduated from uh, uh, college, I rented for <clears> six <throat> months and then I bought a house. So that's the only extent of uh, not ever. Uh, I've always been there under the roof that either my parents owned or I owned in the past seventy-seven years. Well, I'm gonna tell you. It's more sensible not to own anything now. No, it's, it's no advantage to own anything now. You know, uh, the government will, will take you to court, prosecute you, everything else, if you mess with a person's uh, uh, property rights, if it concerns music, writing books, doing scripts to television shows or movies. They call that intellectual property. You cannot touch it. You better not violate it. You download some music without paying for it and see if you're not in a bunch of trouble. Now, but you can go out here and the government can and take away my property rights to real property and nobody seems to, nobody seems to care. Well, you know, <clears throat> property, you have rights to property, but in the eyes of the Supreme Court, property has no rights. Property property itself, in itself <coughs> has, no right. has no rights. They ruled back to about 1994, 95, 96, they had a Supreme Court ruling where this guy took his wife's car, he's kind of a dud, and he uh, 
his wife had worked out this car and paid for it, owned it. But he was out running around on it. And he got caught parked in a city park with a prostitute in uh, one of them air flagrant things, you know. Right. And they seized the car. And she went to court and said, look, he didn't take this car with my permission. You know I didn't permit him to do this. And everybody agreed, but they kept the car. And they based that on a ruling from the John Marshall Supreme Court of the early 1800s, first decade of the 1800s, there was a guy had this ship, and it got stole. He, he owned the ship, and, and he had his crew out of hauling freight, you know, across the ocean. And it got stole by pirates, and they used it for their business. They used it as a pirate ship. And finally, after two or three years, the U.S. Navy, what, what, what existed as the U.S. Navy, captured that ship and kept it. And he went to court, and it ended up at the Supreme Court, and he said, I, I want my ship back. And they said, your ship was used for illegal activity, and you don't own a ship anymore. And he said, well, it wasn't used with my permission. And they said, too bad. It was used illegally, and it's ours. And that, that's been the law of the land since... Two hundred years ago. I don't think that. Uh, I don't think that is uh, uh, kindly. I don't think that goes along with what I uh, see as the intent of American justice. Well, I agree with you, but that has been that has been settled law since eighteen fifteen or something. And I'll tell you, when they voted on this, this had to do with Reagan. Nancy's war on drugs when they could catch you going down the road and you had $10,000 laying there in your car and you had a legitimate reason and it was your money but they could they can take that money and legally you have to prove that you're not going to use it for illegal activity which is impossible to do you can't prove you're not going to do something yeah I know that and that that was what brought that ruling into being and Surprisingly, the the uh, conservative wing of the Supreme Court voted to uphold that. Clarence Thomas and Rehnquist, it was in the Rehnquist court, he wrote the, the uh, uh, majority opinion. I think Scalia voted for it. I don't remember who else was in at the time, but the conservative wing of the Supreme Court voted that property has no rights. And people, well, the murder. Well, I understand that, you know, property is not like a corporation. You know, as a corporation, they have deemed it to be a person. Yeah. But I guess what they need to do is to deem property as being a person, because I think a, per, uh, a property can be a person just as much as a corporation could be a person. Well, I can see... I can make an argument against that, but the whole point is I don't think they'll be able to take anything away from you without paying you for it. And you would think that it'd come under the Fifth Amendment, but well, it don't. See, see here, here's the bad part about it. I can get in your car, and you can have $10,000 laying in the seat, and if I take it, yep. even though you may have made that $10,000 uh, selling drugs, mm -hmm. if I take that $10,000, I am guilty of theft. Yep. But if the government takes it, then they have done it legally, and that's not right. Well, if you go out there and find $10,000 in my car, I'll have it with you, but if you if you take it and get off, just completely get away, you know, I see you, and you, you've gone down the road, and I see my $10,000, and you're zooming right down the road down through yonder, and I call the police, they come get it, not get it back to either one of us. That's, that's right, they will wind up completely, and I don't agree with that. I, I think, uh, and I've said many, many times on this program, that without property rights, there are no civil rights. Well, I have to agree with you, because I've said the same thing after I heard you say it. 
But well, now, meanwhile, back at the ranch, you know, uh, I'll tell you some property that, it, 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 I'll tell you some property that has its rights. What's that? That's them biscuits down at Rainbow Restaurant. Well, we're going to stand up for biscuit rights today, aren't we? I'll we? tell you what's the truth. They, they've got their own rights. They've got the right to be delicious. They're right tasty. Flavorful, hot, moist, just utterly scrumptious. Whether you're putting a piece of bologna between it, a piece of bacon, a piece of ham, a piece of sausage, or where you're putting some alpha butter, or you Her put eggs. Some, I put some good old uh, uh, sorghum molasses over a biscuit yesterday morning. And rainbow restaurant right up above the speed hunt dip, pump dip, pump dip. That sir. was a rainbow restaurant biscuit I put it up. Was it? Yeah. We know what that's at. They got a breakfast special right. two ninety nine. You can't beat it. Right. Ugh, TV. Hey. Well, uh, I guess they didn't want to talk. I'll take that hay back. Un hay. I'll give you straw. Hey. Hey. Meanwhile, I was talking about the straw house, yeah. you know, and uh, gunite guns. I like that idea. You going to build you a straw I don't know in the country? I well or not, you know. Uh, and the weather is not that extreme here that. Uh, uh, You know, it could change, you know, where you need all that much insulation. Well, yeah. you got caves. Right. Ugh, TV. Hey, guys. Hey. hey. Pretty good. Can you talk any louder, or is it us needs to talk louder? Let's do it this way. How's that? That makes a big difference. If you want anybody to hear you, you better talk like that. That's reasonable. Well, that ain't no count. <laughs> what can we do for you? And you don't even know. Five six 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 nine nine. Yeah. I thought that's what it was. Hopefully, uh, the third to bring him some signs. Uh, I'm gonna bring you some signs. Right. Do that. Okay. Thanks, sir. See ya. You're welcome. Have a good night. See ya. Good. Yeah, that's what I'd call it. 
Stayed away from Bob after he got to know you, didn't he, Bob? <laughs> oh, Lord, Lord mercy. I give Bob, uh, what is it, the heck. I give Bob the heck. Buddy. You need to be sure and go to YouTube and watch Bob and, and, and West and Womp. That's a pretty good little little video. I will look that up tonight. That would be very funny. Now, I must ask you one more thing. You were talking about a restaurant that was uh, serving the very good breakfast for very low price. So mm. Which restaurant was that would be Rainbow Restaurant. Oh, the Rainbow Restaurant. Yeah. Um, and what is this word that you use? You said something about the food being... Uh, scrumptious. Scrumptious, yes. Yeah, scrumptious. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's almost being good. Ah. That's so better than good. Better yeah. good? Better than good, better yeah. Better than good. Ah, okay. I will remember that this is very good food. Well, you do that. When you, when you zoom in there on your uh, flying carpet, just pull up to the drive-in window and uh, put that thing in the stationary orbit, and they'll serve you right up. Oh, yeah, just put it in hover. Very good, though. Now, that being said, I, I, I just wanted to ask because I like going for the breakfast in the morning. It's very nice. But uh, I was going to ask you very seriously, what is going on uh, with the, just the finance department? I have heard that they are cutting employment funds. What is, what is going on there? I've not heard them cutting any employment finance department of you? Are they cutting any funds? No. Finance department? Because nope. I have heard very many different things. Well, I, I just know what I read in the paper, and the paper didn't mention that. They said they were able to trim some budgets, but they didn't cut any staff, and I don't no, think they, they had did any. not cut. The, the paper did not say anything about them cutting any of the staff in the finance office. They did cut out a a program that they were going to initiate for an industrial recruit, recruiter, and then they, they they put off some other projects that they were going well, to do. You know, we've back. got an industrial recruiter down there if you quit watching soap operas and going to ball games. Well, uh, that's exactly right, you know. And, uh, uh, By the way, how do you like our new studio here? The studio is very beautiful. Yeah. I like the coloring, and you have a nice mahogany desk. That is very beautiful. What we need is something back there that says Wild Bob Ronnie. We don't want people to find out where we're at. We'll bring something up and hang over it, Bob. Right, well, uh, let me draw you out the design on my computer, and I will bring it to you. And You may laugh at it, but it would be a good way to bring out the Bob and Ronnie. I think you might not want us to block the advertisement back there. Rick, we'll charge him for advertising. I think so, yeah. Oh, no, this, this would take up the entire wall. You would not have to worry about the advertisement. They would not have to advertise because this is so amazing. What you need to do is bring us one of them our, um, um, flying carpets. Well, I do not know about that. They are very hard to import into the United States, seeing as they use meta chemicals and all that. No, I we, would, that. we would like for you to fine tune that rug you have, so when the school uh, opens up here what, in about 16, 17 more days, we want you to fly around over the Davis Chapel area. We're going to do a little bit of uh, research on the fact that there are three buses that run in that area and none of them are anywhere near capacity, yet we are paying for three buses to go out there because uh, they pay per seat per mile, not per child carried. So we we're going to do a little checking on that. We don't blame the uh, uh, bus uh, people on the buses for taking the money, but we do hope that we would have someone occupying a $90,000 a year as transportation director that you ought to have more sense than to enter into a contract like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's really no change in me getting a bus ride if I have a flat somewhere and need a ride home. <laughs> no, it's up, Marcy, I tell you. If they do not uh, fix this county, I, I do not know what I will do. I am thinking of moving back to India, but I will still call the show. I just, I, I am getting to where I do not even want to live here. All right. Well, might just save us room. We'll go with you. Well, I'll tell you, if I can uh, make some room for Wild Bob and Rodney on my plane back to India, you will definitely come. Can a man, can a man buy steak in India? 
Yeah. Can you buy steak in India? I don't know. Well, you can still buy the cow in India. It is just revered as a god there. You have to understand that. So when you buy cow, you have to go into the other district of India where... Oh. Don't have to do that. I, I don't want to be accused of eating grandma or nothing. No, we don't want to eat grandma. No, it is. The Russian district in India is very nice. It has many kinds of steak and most of the meats that we cannot normally eat. And I myself do not follow the whole eating meat rules, so I just eat whatever meat. You mean you not kosher? No, I am not kosher. I, I have to have meat in my diet. It is just a very big necessity <laughs> for me. Well. I hope you uh, have a good day tomorrow, Akbar. We're going to sell right. some more junk here. Get down there and vote a couple of times. All right. I will get down there and vote just for you. Vote early and vote often. Just See like you do in Chicago. See you. Now then, we're going to have to tell them about Dixie Concrete because that's something that, that's, that's, that's rock set, solid. That's set in concrete. Yeah, rock solid. I'm telling you, I went down and... Uh, Bum the bucket of sand off of them. No. And do you know that they are so uh, well versed in the realm of uh, uh, sand and concrete? They and, told you what a bucket They bucket. told me which pile of sand to get it, so the whole that much, which pile of sand to get it out that would best do what I wanted it to do. Making a clock, are you? No, what I was doing was mix, mixing my turnip seed up with the sand. Really? And so I could get an even di dis distribution of the seed. Well, I take it you didn't get five gallons then. No, I got a gallon. <laughs> we used to mix it with meal. Huh? We used to mix it with meal. Yeah, we didn't do that, yeah. I don't you ain't got a whole lot of birds. You come by and you pack a whole lot of specks of meal up. But, uh, Okay, I planted those turnips on last Saturday. On Tuesday, they were up. When did you get the sand? Huh? When did you get the sand? I sand on Friday. I thought you said you got it today. No, no, I got it last Friday. Okay. And Saturday, I planted my turnips. So it helped me on Tuesday. I had good sand turnips up. I hope those are the turnips that come up. Well, you might want to look at them good before you start they, eating they them. Look, they look like turnips, they sure do. Well, you ought to be able to tell the taste of where they're turnips. No. Well, I've got turnips and I've got uh, uh, some other greens. I've got peppers. What diggers turnips is up yet? What? What diggers turnips is up yet? I haven't been down there to say I'll go down and check. Well, I don't I'll... go much in the summer since my forklift don't use propane anymore. I go in the winter. <clears throat> but I'll, I tell you what, I'll go when my grill runs out. But I had, I stockpiled gas, and uh, I got to find it. I, I didn't realize I had any tanks. I had, I found four or five tanks that I didn't know I had. And, right. and they had propane in them, so I'm pretty well good to fall. But if you get to need any propane, I'm a burning that there old, uh, that old winter propane in my grill. But you can go there and get some of that flavored propane. Right. Some are grilling propane down there at Diggers, down there in the middle of Sawmill Holler, 562-544, right in the middle of the road. I'm going to tell you how good that propane is. I canned eight <coughs> pints of corn yesterday afternoon. And that propane was so good, I was laying in the bed last night, and I heard eight pops. All of those lids popped, and the lids and the Jar seal as a result of that good Wilson's gas. I take that you didn't blow the lid off of the pressure cooker. No, no, I'm going to tell you what's the truth. You ought to have seen that old pressure hand of climbing, you know what I mean? <laughs> it got up so high, I said, I think I believe I've got it about high enough, so I'll cut it off and let it gradually drift back down, you know. and. It, it kept the pressure for the longest time, so finally I took the little pressure thing off and let blow all the steam out, you know, and uh, uh, made sure I had the lids on good and tight, put them back in the box that I got them out of, uh, set them down there, and I did. I heard all eight of them jars pop. I knew they'd seal. Well, I guess you can't be right then.
Uh, I guess you canned it right then. When are you going to make us that. some trout? I, I have done that before. When are you going to make us some trout? Well, I'm not going to make us any B.A. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't think you would. No, I'm not going to make any B.A. I, I, I've got a big old stone. Uh, of course, you can do it in a, you can do it in a trash can with a, a plastic liner. Mm -hmm. You're just as good as you can in anything. But I got a, I got a big old stone crock out the house. I can make make some good crap, and I like good crap. I do too. Now, I was amazed when I found out that you didn't put vinegar in crowd. I mean, I'd help cut it up and stuff, but I never did make it. And I was amazed to find out there wasn't no vinegar in it. <laughs> it makes its own. Yeah. It sure does. Salt and water. Yeah. It makes its own. It makes its own. You know, uh, uh, I might go back over to uh, Mayo. Uh oh. You know, I don't know whether they've had any customers since I've been over there or not, you know, but they didn't have a single customer uh, uh, when I was over there last time. But I might have to go back over there. I can't find any cabbage or seeds anywhere. Ain't none to co op? They haven't got any. Huh. Ugh, TV. Hey, Ronnie, pick up the phone. How are you? Hey. <laughs> you have. Yeah, it's easier. <laughs> Catch up on my reading post while Ronnie's on the phone here, because I haven't got yeah, a whole lot of play, you know. But I do want to get back to this school bus deal here in just a minute. And, uh, look, I have some, I have some well, questions get uh, the regarding the way we allocate the money to haul our young ones around. And uh, we may want to look into that a little bit. Uh, a little bit Father, so, uh, yeah. we'll get with that in just a minute. One thing you might want to remember, mm -hmm. you know, we were talking about Wilson's gas here a little bit. Now's yeah. the time not only to get your gas for your grilling, but to start putting back your propane for this winter. If the summer is any indication of how much of an well, extreme summer so we've had. Care, we could very well have yeah. just as uh, an extreme winter and uh, need an awful lot of heat in our house. So I've got uh, 27 20 gallon, 20 pound tanks. I've got two 30 pound tanks. I've got one 40 pound tank. And I've got two 100 pound tanks. Well, that there's 470, 70, 460 pounds, ain't it? Yeah, and you know, if, uh, I made that if, up. if <laughs> Jenny would come up with a finance program, I might go ahead and fill those up. You could start a propane store, couldn't you? <laughs> if you get to, you know, needing a ride to the hospital, let me highly recommend Vital Care of Campbell County, because they, they drive carefully and and they got good service, and they appreciate your business, and they know what they're doing, and they're at 562-9370. You know, I'm about to go down and talk to them at Vital Care. You know, uh, I'm outside a little bit more than you all, but I've been seeing more Vital Care run up and down the road with their lights of place than they have Campbell County uh, ambulances. <clears throat> well, things like that happen. Huh? Things like that happen. Well, I can't understand why, because Vital Care is not mainly in the emergency situation, you know. Maybe we've had more emergencies than they could handle without some Well, help. I did say... I, I know did. what it is. What? It's our advertising. Uh, well, Just hush, we figured it out now. <laughs> well, <coughs> you, know, you know, I did tell Campbell County how much going down the road on the back of a tow truck. Yeah. Uh, it's our advertising, that's what, Danny. Probably less people are going out there and intentionally having wrecks so that body care can come pick them up. 562 in case you intentionally that, have a wreck. We really did not intend for it to be that way. Did you, did you have any plans to go to the Olympics? I'm trying out. <clears throat> well, uh, what are you going to, you going to compete, I you wanna, mean? I was going to. I, I know a sport you need to, to get in. I was going to participate in the Tiddlywinks 
you need to wait two years till they have the Winter Olympics and enroll in that curly thing. Right, for sure. But no, I was going to enroll in the tiddlywink contest. I don't believe they're doing tiddlywinks well, this year. I don't know well, what happened, though. I got hit in the eye with a wild tiddly and couldn't participate. Oh, okay. Well, I want to know, have you ever watched curling? Have you ever watched curling? Oh, yeah, I watched curling. I like skating and working. How did they invent a How did they invent a How did they invent a sport like that anyway? I have no idea. I guess up in the colder regions of the country, you know, back you have to down do here, play what you got, or they couldn't play horseshoes. Well, down here we invented mumly pegs, yeah. you know, <laughs> which is never. But they don't been, do it in the Olympics. That's never been an Olympic sport, <laughs> mumly peg. I guess they couldn't play horseshoes because every time they got a ringer, they broke the icicle. <laughs> well, yeah. we didn't do nothing wrong. It just went away. Right. Sorry. Call Come back. back again, Irene. Broke the icicle. Got a ringer and broke the icicle. There we go. We used to play with real horseshoes. Horseshoes. Oh, yeah. Horseshoes is a whole lot easier to play with than pony shoes. Right, yeah. I've had some pony shoes, too. Right. Uh, we used to play with real horseshoes, too, you know, and uh, uh, they were easy to throw and everything. But I used to be pretty good at horseshoes. Oh, uh, TV. Hey. Hello, uh, TV. How are you? Very middling. How are you all? Great. How are they going to watch Wild Bob and Ronnie if they go to that? Where's it at? Tell us about it. sit on the porch Tuesday yeah. night and do a show. they'll let us in there anymore, Bob. What? No, no. We can't take our dog in here. Well, that leaves both of us out there. <laughs> I'm like that old guy on, uh, on that their Twilight Zone episode. Roscoe P. Cole trains him. Did you know Ros Roscoe died, didn't he? You reckon? No, no he, he had his birthday the other day. You know how old he is? 86 Eight. years old. He, uh, he, uh, he was uh, going down the road. He died, and he went, and they wouldn't let his dog in what he thought was heaven. He just decided to go to the other place. If it wasn't good enough for his dog, he'd just go on, and he ended up in heaven anyway. So uh, I guess if they won't let you take your dog to the park, it might not be too good a place. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Peter yeah. asked me last week what I thought about that, and I do think that they should strictly enforce cleaning up after the animals. Right. And find a hound out of it if right. you don't. Right. And let you take your hound up there if it's on a leash and well behaved. Right. Well, I don't see why that should be a problem. Uh, I get a uh, uh, magazine uh, on che on poultry. No, but and they have, diapers, ducks. they have diapers for chickens. Well, they need some for ducks. They really do. Well, and they and do. geese. Yeah. Boy, they need, they, they go, they can't afford cloth diapers for them suckers. Yeah, that's right. 
You know, I don't know what they would do if the city was in charge of uh, uh, down at uh, uh, the state park. Yeah, I don't either. They'd I don't be know there. what they would do. They would. Uh, uh, they'd go out and drive Stan Faust wild down there as animals. They're writing right. tickets for them geese. Huh? <laughs> They're writing geese tickets. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wrote 460 tickets on geese today. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, uh, I wrote Superintendent's going to get back in. You think so? I that feeling. And Tony Kiss is going to get in. Okay, who else is going to get elected? I really ain't that worried about the rest of us. Well, no, but I'm <laughs> trying to get a scorecard going here. You can't just come in here and right, throw out the two. Right. We're going to get a, like a ball card yeah, is what we we're going to do. I don't see why they don't have a fight. I'm the head of I don't vote for no certain party. I uh, vote against them. I vote for the person. And I don't see why they don't have Republicans both are having a party on our money. Oh, I know that. You know, I mean, that's... Well, I've that's been informed that. that that wasn't Roscoe P. Cole trying to walk in his dog. I knew that he was the one that come back uh, from the dead. They were getting ready to bury him. He woke up, but before he went away, he was making fire with his fingers. And I've not seen that in a long time, but I was thinking that was old Roscoe P. What is his name? Uh, Best. Best, uh, is, best yeah. is his last name. Originally from uh, West Virginia, I believe. Yeah, and then got moved to Kentucky. James Best, I think. Yeah. I know his last name yeah. is Best. James Best. Oh, well, I know who Sorrel Brooks was. You know who Sorrel Brooks was? No. Uh -huh. He was uh, Boss Hogg. Boss Hogg. Thank you, Ogbar. Right. Oh, I'm getting text messages. Ogbar has informed me of a little something going on there, and I appreciate it. Be a good right. boy. See ya. See ya. Thank you. Hey, who are you going to get to haul you some rocks? Oh, we're going to get to the Mike from Ridge Runner Trucking. Yeah, that's that right. Get your gravel. 871 2410. Yeah, yeah. Best rock all around. They'll Free bring it to dirt, you. Whatever you can fit in that truck. They'll do that. Well, it says here the last right. Of Jeff Myrtle Bank, the one where James Best was dead in the coffin, come back to life. I don't know who done that. And I'll look it up and find out. So you never know okay. who who does all these wonderful things unless you look. Oh, that's true, then. I don't know how we were so smart before we got the internet. You know, the city of Lafayette could have had the internet free Wi Fi all over yeah, the city yeah. for what they spent on that library. For less than what the cost to put a roof on the second roof on the and make it look like just to make it look like a library. How much how many streets could that say? I don't know. 
but maybe you'd pave that and go on that side of the hill because it sure does need it. Thank you, sir. Be a good boy. See you. Now, are you, are you looking up Mr. James Bass there? That's Roscoe P. Coltrane. What are you going to learn in there reading? I can't see from this distance. Well, he was in the grave, and he was in the last rites of Jeff <clears throat> Myrtle Bank, and he was Jess Bell. Um, and I don't know. <clears throat> okay, what is it, Jerry? Tell me. What what the wisdom is Jerry imparting to us? Yeah, he's the one who straightened me out on it. I wasn't sure that was Roscoe P. Coltrane. He said it wasn't. He's probably right. I'm going to look it up. But, well, got another text, mate. People, <coughs> people started texting instead of calling, Bob. Yeah. You know how come they invented texting, texting, don't you? How's that? If all them people can't have to spell. No, I can't half text. 871-2410 for your gravel hauling and dirt hauling and mulch right. and compost hauling and all this That's heavy really hauling. That's the trucking company. Got the big blue truck. Go ahead and get your gravel haul now. So you, your driveway and your parking area will be ready for fall and winter and you won't get stuck up right in the middle of your yard. And that, just go ahead and call Ridge Runner Trucking Company. They'll bring you whatever you need at the price you can afford. So it's 871-2410, Ridge Runner Trucking Company. And I went up uh, to one of my favorite stores today which is Napa Auto Parts. And uh, it just seems like that uh, every time I get ready to do something, what I thought I had, I don't have. So I, I got one uh, of my air uh, compressors down in the bottom, you know, <clears throat> for obvious reasons. Uh, there was a guy back over down there with a tire that keeps going flat. So I brought out another one of my air uh, compressors. And my own didn't have a, a chuck on the end of the hose, so I had to go up to Napa Auto Park. And buy you a chuck. And well, he's going to run for Congress yeah, tomorrow. No, yeah, everybody, everybody got the chuck, you know. Uh, uh, they thought that uh, uh, if my name had been Ron, I reckon they really would have thought I was running for Congress. I guess they would. So, uh, have you ever heard uh, Ron Fabio uh, talk? You know, what's he talk about? I might have. He's pretty sensible. He's a uh, author. Honeycutt is the star of the episode. I found the, the I found the transcript. I mean the the script of the thing, but I didn't haven't found the, the character yet. The one where no dogs in heaven. It stars a guy by the name of Arthur Honeycutt, H-U-N-N-I-C-U-T-T. -T. Thank you. Right. Good deal. Now we got James Best off the hook. Yeah, now let's get Napa in there. Right. Hook get, them, and we'll be done with them people. Right. You know, uh, Napa, they've got whatever you need. I love to go up there, you know. Uh, one thing I enjoy going up there, when I find my part, if it's out on the shelf, or if they come out and help me find a part, as soon as they do it, they check me out. I, that's you, strange, ain't it? I, I mean, that's unusual. I go to these other parts stores. I go back, I get four or five uh, quarts of oil, and they get my own filter and everything, bring, bring it up and set it on the counter, and I have sat and wait. I stood and waited and well, waited you know. and waited. And have three or four people running around there. Nobody will even look in your direction. 
So I walked out two or three times and left and sat right there at the cash register. Well, where it is, and I ain't going to name no name, but where it is in some places, you go in and you wait in line to get somebody to help you. And then when you get what you want, then you got to go wait in line to pay for it. That don't make sense to me. It don't to me either. You know, I have, on two or three occasions, I've got my stuff together, you know, which I'm pretty proficient at uh, uh, picking out my oil and my transmission fluid or my uh, oil filter or whatever I need. Take it to the cash register. Be three or four people running around there, and they'd not be helping anybody, you know, be talking to one another. Mm -hmm. I went in there one day, and there the manager of the store had two or three of them cornered there, uh, teaching them how to uh, give good service to the customer, <laughs> and uh, uh, you could not get checked out. I walked off and left him flapping his lips there to his employees. Well, I tell you, uh, the difference is, when you're locally, I mean, you know, when, you, when the main business owner is part of the help, they understand what people want, and they give better service, I think. You call them up if you need a part at 5629-406 or 5622629. You're that loud. I guess we did. He must have been wanting the phone number, and right. I give it to him. But I, I enjoy going you see to what this one is. Go out there right directly across from IGA. That's where it's at. Uh, TV. Hey, good evening. Hey, well, howdy, sir. Our resident lawyer. Hey, well, I've been called some names before. That's just about fighting words, ain't it? Hey, gentlemen, this is a subject that I've been researching a little bit on, and this is this small arms treaty with the UN. Yeah, they've put that back on the back burner for a while. Well, have they or have they not? They have for a while. Okay, I've just come up with something that states that Hillary has signed into this thing with the UN back sometime in the past and there's not been anything said about this thing going through that they're still working on it. Uh, when you uh, get information that's been put back, uh, what does that mean? Has it been put on? The, it's not been done away with, has it? Well, uh, it's like if you had this year uh, resort hotel, you wanted somebody to build for you. <clears throat> and you just keep bringing it in every now and then. Sooner or later, somebody goes to sleep and you get it built. Well, yeah, I know what you're talking about there. Yeah, well, I you believe. stand in Campbell County and P.N. Anderson County. Yeah, I believe what you got to do, though, is get a, a county powers act passed first. That'll uh, help, I guess. Legitimize it. But anyhow, we'll discuss that sometime. We'll get a chance. But this thing right here, from what I'm reading, and if I'm getting it correct, the president has found out some way to go around the Congress on this thing to where there's no open discussion on it. And I wouldn't doubt that. If uh, there's a lot of stuff going to happen between November the second or whatever it is, and and June, I mean January the twentieth. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, it's going to happen one way or the other, but uh, it'll happen especially if uh, Romney gets elected. Well, I understand what Where's you're Where's Guy Falk when you need him? Well, I hear what you're saying. But if this thing, if it's correct in what I've read, it's downright spooky. Uh, <coughs> people need to run this thing. If you didn't got your computer, just bring up uh, the Small Arms Treaty with and Hillary Clinton and read on this thing and see what you can make out of it. Uh, it's serious business, very serious. Uh, we could end up losing yeah. our second amendment. Now, is, this, is this what Justice, uh, the Supreme Court Justice, was uh, went on working about? Okay, he stated that there was room for flexibility or something to adjust our Second Amendment rights. On the state level. Pardon? On the state level. Well, gentlemen, I don't understand all of it. And well, that's what, he, that's what <clears throat> my understanding was. He's talking about on the state level. Because, see, really, the states have more leeway <clears throat> on that than the federal government does. But technically, the, the government, the, the, the federal government is supposed to be, as far as uh, law 
that's uh, actually depending on their passage. I mean, it's, they're, they're restricted to Washington, D.C. The, the Supreme Court is what makes the decision to, to hand down the ruling as far as what's constitutional <coughs> or not mm -hmm. and to adjust the Constitution. And if uh, the Supreme Court adjusted this thing the same way, just like with the health care thing, they yeah. can run, they, well, it could be the end of our Second Amendment rights. And the way I'm reading the parts of it, they don't, they don't start off all at once, but it takes certain things first. It takes your ammunition and puts enough paperwork and whatever, and finally it comes down, if I'm reading this thing correct, to where that you do turn your weapons in. Now, we're down to a lost cause here anyway. This country is going to go bankrupt and split up or go to martial law or there's going to be a... a, a a serious and sudden change in politics, and I don't believe that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I don't either. Well, uh, <coughs> thing spooks me. I mean, really concerns me. Uh, I don't want to see such thing come about. If it falls apart, uh, can't pay the bills, and, and the people refuse to come up with any more money, and uh, the military won't um, won't back the politicians. And, far on the citizenry, then you're liable to see this country split into sections. Yeah. Well, you, you can you can see the Southwest being chopped off and being... Uh, Who wants uh, California, though? Uh, Who's going to take California? Uh, They're going to saw it off and push it out to sea. I don't think anybody wants California. They could get, they could get uh, the western side of the Cascade Mountains there and right. throw in Washington State That's and right. Oregon. Let me tell you something that's scary. I have said for since I looked into it and thought about it when I was 17 years old, I come to the conclusion that if you could learn to read minds, well, you know, I, I ain't, I'm talking way out, but they're getting to the point where they can do that somewhat with computers. But I'm just saying, if you if you get to the point where you could read minds, you would have a perfect justice system. You would also uh, lose control of your country because sooner or later the wrong person will start reading minds and know how to handle everybody. Well, now here's where I'm getting with that. We have allowed uh, drones to be used by the police departments in this country. It's already they're already been used. They're spying on farmers, make sure the cows ain't peeing in the creek out west, and they're doing <clears throat> other things with that. So, I mean, they've got these. It sounds unbelievable, but they've got these. These uh, little drones down to the size of, of uh, uh, dragonflies. And I think they've actually gotten smaller. It can broadcast a signal for a short distance or up to an hour on the charge available and fly to where they're going. But let me tell you something else they've got, and they say they'll have it operational within another year. It already works, but they'll have it in the airports. And they can, they say in from about 150, 160 feet away, they can point this thing at you, and it uses a series of lasers <clears throat> that probably in a, in a light spectrum where they won't even be noticeable, but they will, they use this, and this sounds screwy, but you look it up if you don't believe me, this, this, uh, use this to agitate the uh, molecules, like in your breath, or from your clothing, and all that, and they can determine what you've had for breakfast from your breath. They can detect, uh, just on the molecular level, any sort of uh, an explosive uh, uh, component. When when they get to Lake and look at you and determine that much from that distance, somebody's going to write an algorithm and say, we found that people who, and this sounds silly, but you get the idea, maybe people who have have bacon for breakfast tend to do something else later on. You can finally generate enough information from people to just practically read their intentions from a distance, and then it's all over with. Right. Well, gentlemen, right now, I'm on a list. I'm on two or three lists, and I'm not talking about the S list. I'm talking about the serious list. And anybody that is certified for certain things, and I yeah. don't care if it's from a handgun permit right on up to other things, all of our ex-military who are activists in any 
active way or not active. Yep. If they've been specially trained, they're on a list. Everybody's on a list. Now, you think this is a, a parent yep. order or whatever. Got to go. better take it serious. No. Got to go. Folks, we just, thank you, everybody. Yeah, Sorry we didn't get to the other we caller. We'd like to get off of here. We'd like to leave you, Happy folks. Happy trails, folks. Thank you. We've thank enjoyed you. being with you, and we look forward to seeing you next Wednesday night here at WLAF 1450 on your dial. Also, tune in at 7 o'clock on Tuesday night to UGG TV for a live performance of uh, well, UGG TV. Right. Thank you. Uh, TV on the internet. Hello. Hey. Oh. Uh, uh, TV on the internet. Hello. Hello. Hey. Uh, yes. Uh, I have a quick question. Uh, you said that the Lord gave you the idea when you go to the high school. When what? Freshman go to the high school. Something to the high school. Freshman. Freshman. Oh. Now, hang on a minute, I'll find it for you. <clears throat> I think <clears throat> I think that you can get that from uh, LaFolletNews.com, but just hang on a second here and I'll see. Okay. I was thinking, Bob, you know, we uh, got apprehended over there trying to break in Y-12. If we'd have had a nun with us, we could have got in there. There we go. <laughs> they really had good security, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see here now. I found that, had that information recently. I bet they're going to come on our telephone. If we bought it, I guess we won't be in too big a hurry. My computer's slow because I'm still broadcasting on it. Yeah. 